or 25 letters or more. Dude, I just did that though. Oh well. Guess I have to do it again when it really counts. Mm. Yeah, this game isn't too hard. Like, on your first time through, you probably won't get it right away. Just because, I don't know, it takes a little bit getting used to it if you don't have good hand eye coordination. Which I really don't, but even I can pass this with pretty ease with just a little bit of practice. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to get it this time. Dude, I need to hurry up. Crap. Oh. Yes, 25 letters on the nose. Not bad, not bad. Clap for me. 25 letters. You have amazing coordination. Seriously, I'm stupefied. Incredulous. I kid you not. We veterans do this all day long. <laughs> veterans of the postal throwing minigame. I find that hard to believe. I've got to give you more money. Got to. 3 rupees per letter. 75 rupees? Good lord. Too bad my wallet's full. Grr. Yeah, my name's Argon. I thought you looked like the t a tad like the chief team was talking about. In that in that case, I should have expected you to be able to pull off something like this. Oh, did the chief team like come up to you and he's like, "Hey, there's this guy and he's wearing a stupid hat and he has amazing hand-eye coordination." So, is, like, is that the conversation that we're talking about here? Maybe you can give him some advice on the next time you come by. So there's an intern around here. That's what I gathered from that. And we're gonna have to help them because we gotta help everyone in this place. Alright. I don't know why I'm bringing the pots here. Destroying the storeroom. <laughs> That's so fun, because you never get to do that in real life. Just go around breaking pots. Hello. Nice eye makeup. Hey, I know you. Yeah! You're the adventure guy. The adventure guy? <laughs> what, are you talking about the main character from Hudson's Adventure Island, or me? So, with all this adventuring you do, did you happen to find a golden feather? Not yet, boy. My friend, my girlfriend, she's wanted one of those things for the longest time. And actually, I kind of promised that I'd send one to her. Oh, making promises you can't keep. Tisk tisk. Fred, I'm gonna have to dock your salary for that, Mr. Johnson. Oh, I don't know anyone named Buddy. Whoa, look at this door. That's scary looking. It looks like it wants to eat me. Kind of reminds me of Bongo Bongo almost. I don't know why. Just the whole essence of the Shadow Temple. Whoa, look at this guy. He's playing with a ball on his chest. Man, I want that ball. It looks cool. Huh? Who are you supposed to be? The hero of time, I think. What do you want from me, huh? I, I don't want to talk to anyone right now. Oh, well, screw you too. Alright, well, here's your stupid letter. Asshole. Take it, asshole. A letter? From my asshole? Father? <laughs> oh, sure. Telling me to be brave is easy enough for him. It's not like he's the one who went through that horrible experience. It's not like he has to still get a scale from Valu. You're in this letter too, you know. Poking your nose in other people's business. You're nosy, aren't you? Sorry, but I really don't feel like going to see Valu right now. I mean, how am I supposed to get a scale from him when he's so upset? What? Are you trying to say that you can calm Valu down? Psh! That's just a big fat lie. It's easy to say you can do anything. Bragging doesn't cost a thing. I tell you what, if you can tell, if you can find me someone who can get past all the obstacles on Dragon Roost to get to Valu, then I'll listen to anything you say. Dude, my phone just went off. That's stupid. Man, this guy's kind of an asshole, though. I don't know what it is about him. Apparently, he went through some horrible experience. He alluded to that there. I think it's kind of cool that they just allude to that horrible experience, whatever it is. And then they never actually explicitly describe it. It's kind of cool. It leaves it up to your imagination. Like, did he get torched by Valu when he tried to grab a scale or something? Who knows? Alrighty here. Uh, whoa, look at this place. <laughs> this reminds me of that one book. I don't remember what it's called. It's that one book with, like, the immortal guy and he drinks from, like, the, the spring. I read it in, like, 8th grade English class. I can't remember the title. It's like the Ever Spring or something. Hey, you actually came. I'm really sorry for bringing you to such a dangerous place. I had to. It wouldn't have caught. It would, I wouldn't have asked if I didn't need help desperately. You see this place? There used to be a spring here, surrounded by a beautiful pond. It was peaceful and lovely. But then the great Falu, he became so angry, and in his rage, he shook the mountain, and the boulder crashed down, plugging the spring like a butt. You can see the result. Oh, but where's my mind? Dude, I need to give these people- I'm using, like, crap for voice acting in this place. Oh, but where's my mind? Tell me, how was Prince Kamali? He was an asshole! 
Oh, that doesn't sound right. Not at all. I may be partially to blame for the bad turn Prince Kamale's taken. See, Prince Kamale's grandmother was the Great Valu's former attendant. She was an amazing woman. I was honored to have her as my teacher. She was kind and brave and unsurpassed in her dealings with the Great Valu. I'm not yet worthy of being mentioned in the same breath as her. There's that humbleness again. Self-depreciation. Doesn't get you anywhere, but it sure feels, feels like you're being nice or something. If only I possessed some of her strength, I'm sure Prince Kamali would have felt more secure. Argon, I'm sorry to ask this, but I need your help. I want to go to the small shrine that's near the peak of Dragon Roost, but that ledge over there is so high, and I'm so small. If I can get some wind under my wings, I'm sure I can get up there. Oh yeah, really? Well, I'll yeah, I'll help you. Why not? You seem like a nice girl. Man, she's so polite too. She's just bowing and saying please and thank you. Man, if only the real world was more like you. I'm I'm becoming a cheese ball here. I don't know what's happening. The atmospheric currents are really messed up, so pay close attention to the direction of the wind. All right, I'm ready. Now don't hold back. Now throw me as hard as you can. Oh, it's like that one guy in Super Mario Sunshine. He's like, don't hold back. And then you don't hold back. And he just throws you clear across the freaking gap. Oh, man. The wind changed at the perfectly wrong time there. Shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say shut up to you. Just a force of habit, you know. Yeah. In case it wasn't obvious, though, you just want to wait for the wind current to be blowing towards that edge. And then you want to throw medley. I'm gonna miss it here, though, aren't I? Oh, oh, yes, I got it! I think I just got that in the nick of time, too. Look, the wind was just about to change. Oh, thank you! Thank you so much! <laughs> I think now I'll be able to climb Dragon Roost and mute the Great Valu. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I may just be an apprentice attendant, but I can understand from the, some of the Great Valu's language. You can understand Dragon? I wish I could do that. Look, if anything happens to me, please look after Prince Kamali. This is all I have to give you. I know it's not much, but please take it. Not another this. I don't need another sale. Oh, wait, but the sale was that. So this is an empty bottle. Said it to Y, Z, or X. Bottles are great for carrying water and holding other things. Oh, boy. Oh, and please don't tell anyone that I'm climbing Dragon Roost. It'll be our secret, okay? I'll keep you my dirty little secret. <laughs> Bet you thought I was going to go for something like it's a secret to everybody. Man, like, when was the last time I heard that song, though? I don't know. You filled your bottle with water. Try pouring it on something that looks dry and withered. Oh, could they make it any more obvious here? Jeez. I think there's actually a guy you can talk to inside the lobby of Dragon Roost, and he'll tell you something about withered plants and how you can water them and stuff. But then it just tells it to you right there, and there's withered bomb flowers right here, so... Put two and two together, and you've got a nice blue bomb flower! And you just huck that. Oh, crap, no. It fell in the water. Oh, my God. Poor display, poor display. B minus. There you go. That's the shot that you're looking for. Hmm. That water spout reminds me of Okami a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. This weird panning shot around the spring, it always seems so out of place in this game. I don't know why. It just does to me. Oh, but we rose the water level. And of course it stops rising at the perfect moment that you need it to stop. Uh, ew, I so I'm sorry for making you swim through this link. Look at this. There's all this crap on top of the water. I hate having to swim in that stuff. Because then you like come out of the water and all the stuff sticks to you. And it's totally like just unsensical. Because water is supposed to clean you off. Not make you feel nastier than what before you got in. I don't know. Alright, so here you need to build a bridge across by using the bombs. Blowing up these pots. This one can be kind of tricky, the second one here. N no, don't do that. Oh. No, stop. That's not how you... Oh my god, you don't hang from the banister here. Or from the ledge. Trying to get up to the bomb flowers. Yeah, you, should, you shouldn't you should spend like too much time on this. Like, see, I think I just got it right there. Yeah, just be careful not to blow yourself up while you're doing that. Because I've done that a few times, and you normally just get plunged right into the lava. And you don't want Link to experience that kind of pain, do you? Alright, here's our first real dungeon now, Dragon Roost Cavern. Oh, we got three guardians. <laughs> but which one of these is not like the other? Which one of these just doesn't belong? 
Oh, well, it's obviously this one, but that's the one we're going to have to ignore now. Oh, our first puzzle of the game is very easy. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah, so Forsaken Fortress, that was pretty much like a prelude kind of dungeon. This is the real deal holy feel now. So, get ready, because there's some serious shit to go with that down this dungeon. I tell ya. Alright, dude, that guy just bounced clear across the room. Did you see that? He, like, hit the wall, and then he slid across the room like it was ice physics or something. I don't know. That sounds like it could be a line in a song, almost. He slid across the room like it was ice physics. Someone make a song out of that. Let me know how it turns out, how you build a song around one line. I'm sure it's been done before. Uh, you know, like, I can't hold this feeling anymore, or... I, or I can't fight this feeling anymore, that's what it is. There's our first small key, though. That's good. Now that I think about it, pretty much every song is built around a single line. That's what the definition of a chorus, really. <laughs> All right. Oh, man, look at how sweltering this place is. You can even see the heat. I love that, how you can, like, actually see the heat wave effect in the place. Oh, man, this place looks busy. Whoa, that's a tall room. Well, I guess I should expect nothing less. You saw how tall the island was from the outside, so... Hmm. I don't know. I like this room, though. I do like this dungeon quite a bit. I like how they changed it up. Instead of, like, making the forest temple or the swamp temple the first one, they make it a fire dungeon. It's kind of cool. Oh, a little bit different. Changing up the formula. It's, this whole game really changes up the formula now, doesn't it? Oh, not too bad, though. Alright, now here we go. Watch it go! Boom! Nice. Is that the first time I've said this in the entirety of the LP? It's crazy. There's so many bombing events in this game, though, I'm gonna have to say that a lot. Maybe I should have a watch it go boom counter. Of course, that wouldn't be explicitly ripping off anyone now, would it? Alright. Ooh, it creates a landmass. A temporary landmass. That's fun. That reminds me of that one episode of Lilo and Stitch, the TV series, where experiments like number 300 and something, they like, use their water and fire powers to expand the landmass of Hawaii. That's so cool. I don't remember what, exactly what experiment numbers they are, though. What I can tell you is that they're not experiment number 627. That guy's an asshole. Alright, man, look at a lot of steam right- No! Oh, I'm sorry, Link. That's what happens when you get your butt burned. Oh, and then your butt starts fuming on top of that. <laughs> like, could you put it any more bluntly? Like, your butt is on fire, dude. First you see your butt on fire, and then you see the smoke rising from your butt. It's like, oh, watch out for this guy. Okay, yeah. I was afraid he was gonna hit me there. Thankfully, I dodged him rather skillfully there. Nothing too hard. Yeah, that guy almost always gets me. I'm kind of surprised that I remembered him. But I remembered him like halfway up the ladder, so I almost didn't remember him. Right? Oh, and all of a sudden we're in a dark room. It's dark like it's nighttime. In a kitchen just like yours. Always quiet. It's quiet. Or is it? The North American house hippo is found throughout Canada and the eastern United States. House hippos are very timid creatures and are rarely seen, but they will defend their territory if provoked. They come out at night to search for food, water, and materials for their nests. The favorite foods of the house hippo are chips, raisins, and the crumbs from peanut butter on toast. They build their nests in bedroom closets, using lost mittens, dryer lint, and bits of string. The nests have to be very soft and warm. House hippos sleep about 16 hours a day. Blah, blah, blah. I need to learn the rest of that commercial sometime so I can recite that guy for you guys. <laughs> maybe I should just... Maybe instead of, like, leaving that clip in of me saying it, I should just cut the commercial in. That would be kind of fun. Who knows? Alright, this is really fun, though. Like, how you... I love this aspect of the game, how you get to pick up the enemy's uh, weapons. And sometimes, not only do you get to pick them up, but you have to use them. Like here, for instance, you can't break this hardwood unless you use the Boca Blinds machete. It's kind of cool. I guess you can use fire, too, but we don't have a Boko stick, so... You got a small key! 
That's the second one in the game. I love the look of small keys in this game. All right, no, get the get the jelly, get the jelly, sweet. All right. Oh, what's with all the chews? Are they like supposed to be fire chews or something? You know, like fiery Bowser. <laughs>